Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, the moment of insecurity you feel when you realise you left your ports unlocked and everyone can see. And uh, today it's time to continue. Why do I always say it like that? It's highly peculiar. Anyway, we are playing more Transistor and we are running around doing Transistor things. So, let's dive right in. Looks like you get to put off selection for a while longer. I like how um, easily and built in the kind of explanation for how this world works and the way its function functions are. Um, it's. Oh, I think this is a boss. It's always far more to my uh, to my taste when you have characters just mention things that exist, and it doesn't feel the need to explain what they are or how they work. It's much more believable. For a uh, world to be just talked about by the characters in it the way people might talk about their world in real life you know nobody <laughs> if someone makes a reference to a historical event in real life they don't explain the historical context they just expect you to know what world war ii was you know i really hate this um i mean it's convenient when the uh enemy units break the shields for me but i do hate the uh shield limiter just because it means it takes so much longer to fight all these things. Whenever I do too much damage to these things it tells me that I'm doing overkill. As far as I know that's a bad thing. Uh, I think it's there to warn you that you are wasting a hit. However I've often found that it'll say overkill and then um, either the thing will bounce out of the way of your second attack or for some reason, the damage represented here in the turn um, planner just is not the same as the actual damage done when it's running through. I don't know why that is. I've never quite figured it out. I Presumably it's different reasons whenever it happens, but I still don't actually have a cause. But yeah, I think um, the people put a lot of stock in world building, and I think that... The important thing is not how built your world is, um, you know, just how absolutely swole your your planets are, how absolutely stacked your um, setting has gotten. What does this say? You know, I've never once seen the Visitors Bureau open. I like. I, there are a lot of implications that quite possibly this city is the only world or the extent of this world. They talk about getting out of the city, but. There's no actual mention of any other places, and as he says, the Visitors Bureau has never been open. High rise is dead ahead. Across the, the canals. What the hell was I talking about? Oh yeah, like world building is highly praised, but the secret to good world building is not having every single detail thought out. And as I always go on about nice people last time we were here. interpreting a world that has been world built as as if it were a real world with every single detail thought and planned out. Um, hey there, little guy. You lost? No? We better move. Uh, yeah, like, it's not about having every detail planned out. It's about a world that makes sense for the characters in it. And um, I'm not going to go on one of my rants about how people act as if there's some kind of higher platonic realm that everything exists within, because that's... I mean, I've done that plenty of times, I'll probably do it before this Let's Play is over, but, you know, let's all move on from that for now, because I've got chickens to stab. Cluckers. It's, uh, go again. it's an excellent way to get rid of them, if you ask me. So, we could take Mask again, which, well, I mean, it showed up previously, so we could take it this time, having not taken it before, and uh, that will give us a stealth ability. Or we could take Load, which is the explosive AoE. I think I'll pick that one up next, and I'll take this for now. Um, primarily just because that's what I picked on my um, on my on my practice uh, save that I used to run through each area before I actually start recording each episode. Secret hidden uh, background facts. Anyway, I was talking about something, but I've completely forgotten what it was, so let's fight a bunch more of these things, I guess. Is that- I can back serve it if I come behind it, right? I should hit the weed as well first. Yep. 
I hope that anyone who was uh, disappointed by my mechanical abilities at this game will be pleased. But as I said before, this is not about me doing super great at the combat. This is about me just playing through it and talking about all of the, you know, designs and stuff. Actually, there's something interesting about these clucker enemies, which is that um, they reflect a fundamental silliness that you get in a lot of um, Supergiant's games. Supergiant have a variety of important themes that they care a lot about, and their games are works of art that engage with those themes. However, um, it would be very easy for something to be completely kind of um, stony-faced about, you know, the art they make, but there is a, a deep humour to um, Supergiant's work, and not even a kind of like a, a wry humour, just a kind of like goofiness, just, as I said, silliness. And uh, the Cluckers are the first example of that in this, which is pretty serious, you know, it, it's internally pretty serious about what's happening, and it, it, it's not really a, a funny game, it's not a comedy game, it's a game about some fairly powerful themes. But also there are enemies called Cluckers which shit eggs at you that then explode, so, you know, swings and roundabouts. Sky changed 62 days ago. Hard hitting pull. Blue, blue skies are a choice. Help create an unforgettable quarterly solstice by choosing your favourite evening sky colour. The sky looks blue because we want it to. I do love that line. I think that there's a lot of, as I said before, really good writing in this, and it crops up as just random lines quite frequently. Although I believe that's a line from one of the um, uh, story files that I've been slowly unlocking. I quite like a green sky, personally. Green. Nice. Thanks. Now then, back to the scene. So before we move on, I want to shuffle these around a bit because we've got a new skill and also the ability to slot things in the passive slot, which in case you're wondering is over here. So I'll be back in a second. So I've installed uh, Crash to unlock the uh, final chunk of Red's story and then next up the Boxer story and so on as we go through. The rest I've just shuffled around to finish unlocking the uh, basic things. Mask we've just gained so that doesn't have any story unlocked yet. Um, as far as I know, um, Sword comments on everything, uh, on any of these randomly when you open them up, so it's not actually a matter of the first time you look at them. You get a line and then otherwise it's missed. He, I think he always says something the first time you look at the text file for one of these, but then he has like a random chance of saying something every time you open it. Anyway, let's take a look at the limiters, because we've got a new one, but what does this say? The cells, they spoil. They spoil like, well, anything that spoils, except instead of spoiling, they become something else, something they don't seem to want to be. This is no conversion, but a total metamorphosis. It cannot be reversed, as far as I can tell. Once the cell has shifted to this form, then all that remains for it to expel its is for it to expel its stored potential, like a last breath, back into the ether, I suppose. Some form of self-defense? Royce. I don't know if these unlock subsequent text chunks the way that the uh, processes do. Or, not processes, the... Uh, whatever the spells you can slot are called. Um, that still says terminated by user 36. I thought I've killed some more since then. Anyway, next up, the one for the young lady. I prefer this one because the shields are irritating. If it spawns two cells and you're in the right place, you can still just grab them both for the same difficulty. So, let's move on. I wish I may walk through the empty streets. I love the detail of her, um, yes, of the scratching on the ground as she moves along. Should we want to catch most of- can I hit those like this? Yeah. Like I said, this game is primarily about positioning. The tricks basically boil down to getting in the right position to hit everything as much as possible, and yeah. So instead of having, um, my jaunt ability moved me around. What I have done is Get him, girl. equipped the uh, new cloak ability and then added jaunt to it as a passive. So when you're in the turn timer, you can actually direct your uh, minion around if you grab one using the minion summoning ability. Which I never really use, even though it's quite good because 
you know, it gives another target for enemies to hit, which means sometimes they aren't hitting you. Anyway, um, I installed Jaunt into my um, cloaking ability, which means I'll move faster while I am invisible. Can I hit all of these? Hmm, yeah, see, according to the turn timer, it said all of those would die, and yet they do not appear to have done so. I don't... I, I've never understood what dictates that, and I've never seen, like, any, like, strategy guide explanations to this that actually accounted for that. Um, so if anyone does know why sometimes it says you'll do enough damage to kill it and then you don't, even though you didn't bounce it out of your attack, let me know, because I am very curious. Oh god, ah! So yeah, um, I look forward to being able to slot Crash as a primary attack again. That's my preferred place for it, because I do like the damage bonus you get. And I love the massive dam- yeah, see, I thought for sure he would have died. Um, I love the massive damage output of the uh, Breach when combined with um, with Spark. Because it's such a huge AoE as well with the, with the three arrows. Is anyone out there? I thought so. Yeah, they weren't kidding. That sword can shout. But, um... I mean, I have to wonder if anyone else can hear him. Is there any reason to assume that anyone other than uh, Red can hear him at all, anyway? Anyway, I'm just going to rearrange these real quick. So, let's find out what the final chunk of Red's story is. The Camerata found her one night, once the crowds dispersed after one of her performances. They had reason to believe she would be alone, rehearsing said new material. But she was not alone, and the presence of another individual dis disrupted aspects of the Camerata's plan for the night. Red survived the incident, becoming separated from the Camerata due to these unforeseen events on their part. Though her trace data remains intact, partial transfer did, did occur, including transfer of ownership status of something the Camerata believed theirs. Now, I like that because that's an ambiguous line, but it actually refers to a couple different things, depending on how you want to take it. The transfer of ownership status of something the Camerata believed theirs almost certainly could be said to refer to the transistor itself. Oh, dang, that's a lot of, uh... How do I get out of here? Just run. Marriage is proposed 219, huh? That was 50. And again, this area is called Floating Point because everything in this is a computing pun, as far as I can tell. Red, have a look out there, toward high rise. Traverse and Hall, the annex building. They're not there anymore. Half the skyline's disappeared. Whatever's after us, it's spreading. To rip this whole town apart. To get us. Or to get away. Anyway, having got past that extremely dangerous, wink, uh, situation, I just want to finish saying what I was saying before I was interrupted by 10,000 angry fucking waterfowl. Um, actually, chickens aren't waterfowl, are they? They're like field fowl or something? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so the other clever thing sandbox? about the, uh, the other clever thing about the line about ownership status One is that How about we shut him? is that it could also be said to refer to Red's voice. The taking of her voice wasn't necessarily what the Camerata intended, but Door number one, round number two. If she's a public figure and the Camerata are in charge and she starts saying Ready things they don't want her to say, you know saying that her um, her voice is something they believe belong to them is is quite a a good clever and um, kind of a powerful line really if you think about it they thought it was theirs so they tried to take it away and they didn't get it 
but they did ruin it for her as well. So I like that it has that ambiguity and could genuinely be referring to Isla. Yeah, see, me summoning that explosion listed her as, as dying from it, even though she then didn't. So I did say I was going to edit these out. I'm going to actually cut here, quite simply because I do want the, uh, you know, XP and progress and stuff. I just uh, don't think it's especially interesting to watch me clumsily complete a combat challenge. But yeah, like so... Like last time. Only better. Like I said, I do love the... Um, the writing in this game and I think it's often quite clever with those little ambiguities and clevernesses. So uh, I'm gonna cut again here and we'll be back in a minute. But wait, there's more. No wait, no I'm not. I'm actually gonna leave this uncut because I want to show you the first one of each challenge so you can see what the challenges are like. Yeah, more sand. As far as I know they just Something's changed. Try your moves. Remain the same, but uh just gotta hold them off. Yeah, they remain the same, but they are um, slightly more difficult each time, so I don't think it's interesting to do them multiple times. However, it's worth seeing them the first time around. So this one is just a survival challenge that lasts two minutes, I think, so I'll be skipping from here. And we're back. So yeah, uh, that challenge is just survive, so it's kind of easy just to run in circles, especially when it gives you the friendship power, the power to make anything be your friend instantaneously. If this is gonna give us an edge, then we might as well. A power that, frankly, uh, I wish I had in real life, and I'm sure you do too. What's behind door number five? I don't remember what this one is, actually. So calm. We oh. can come here for practice. Yeah, this is just an open practice combat mode. You can spawn enemies in and set your abilities however you like. Um. Which is not especially interesting right now, so let's go. That's enough of that. Anyway, final one. Door number three. This is the planning test, which gives you one turn in order to wipe out all of the enemies on the, uh, the map. We're surrounded. I'm not going to bother editing this one out because it's the simplest one imaginable. Uh, it's not difficult. I say, making it needlessly difficult for myself. But yeah, no, it's this simple. Congratulations, ton uh, tons? Well, oh. some free XP. Never mind. But the first ones are always pretty easy. <laughs> like two experience points. Also, all of them unlock music files in the player down here. That's another nice thing about Supergiant. They often have little music players in their games, which makes sense because their music, um, all of which has been composed by Darren Korb, as far as I know, uh, all four games. Um, oh, I forgot about this. We're not alone. Hey, she's friendly, I think. Hi, Luna. Can I call you Luna? Good girl. Who doesn't want a pet magic dog? spun out of the creative forces that created your universe Back to reality. <laughs> and that are now currently actively engaged in the gentle and slow deconstruction of its in of it in its entirety okay back on track Time so, to dance. Well, let's head on and fight probably a ton more design. of these fucking things i do hate them because they're a bit too goofy for me. They're a bit disproportionately goofy to how the rest of the game kind of is. Can I actually- can I use passive effects like Switch when they are protected? That's what I want to know. Also, as far as I know, cheerleaders don't have a front or a back. They're just kind of there. I don't think you can get backstabbed off them. Give us a hand. Ah, okay. So you can switch them even when they're, uh... Huh, that's quite effective, actually. So if you switch them, the cheerleaders immediately break off their um, attack because they're no longer allied to the things that they are uh, buffing. That is useful to know, because um, obviously if you switch a cheerleader, the cheerleader starts helping you, which is also really useful. Can I get backstab? No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, 
I could have gotten a third bouncer and they might have finished it off. Oh well. One thing I dislike about this game, which may or may not be intentional, is uh, how incredibly slow you are. I don't especially enjoy games that make you move slowly. Um, I find it irritating. Did my did my limiter not activate? No, there it is. Hmm. Anyway, um, this is going to be where we end for today. Let's just catch up on the uh, on these. So. The third chunk we discovered about the nameless individual in our sword, who may or may not be our nameless boyfriend, who may or may not be a boxer. Timestamp on the subject's integration coincides with the timestamp of previous authenticated user of relinquishing access and control. Although subject's trace data was corrupted during integration, nonetheless such data has its uses, and consequently derived a suitable function. Subject's trace data remains disjointed and cannot be recovered. So essentially the record of him in the sword is is corrupted and incorrect. Is that why he's listed as question, question, question? Um, perhaps he did have an identity before he got sworded. <laughs> before he suffered such a sordid end, if you will. Um, anyway, so I'm going to fiddle with these, but that is all from me for today. I hope you had a nice time. Bye! If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements, and one-tweet micro-reviews, or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi, or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.